the need for change and the anxiety that change creates is is a um, that's an administrative nightmare. Um, so before the class began, we met with the school counselor Tom Everhart from he's a looping counselor from the middle school. They start with the sixth graders and they go sixth, seventh, eighth, and then into freshman year, and then they loop back. So as we met with him, uh, we went through kids he recommended through talking to the teachers in the middle school. School has not worked for these children. So that's when you come in, you're like, something has to change for school to have an impact on these lives in a positive way. A lack of engagement really was the primary. And that you know there's things that have to happen for your building to get better, but change is scary. That began the process of us designing a program to target those kids, and specifically kids who are disengaged, disenfranchised with their school experience. My name is Maya Hawkins. Emily Packard. My name is Matt Murphy. I'm Cassidy Harry. It's Jordan Reynolds. Uh, my name is Ethan Kelly. Joseph Reynolds. It's Josh Debray. Cam Murphy. Kevin Williams. Harry Robinson. Abby Bookwit. Not sure if I would like it or not, but right now I'm starting to like it. It was new. I. I just went with the program. I like how we get to do our own thing, come up with our own projects, and it's a pretty good class. My first impression was that it would be a regular boring class that you wouldn't use any of the skills. It's better than that. Today for the eye is to create a bridge made just out of newspaper and tape. And the point of doing that is so that the kids can work together in groups that maybe they haven't worked with before and that they can really see the value of collaboration. This is something that's a pretty difficult challenge and it's not there's no obvious answer. It just takes time. It takes people using working in different roles and using the materials in different ways. So my hope for them at the end is to not only figure out the answer to this problem, not that there is just one answer, but in doing so they will work together and get to know each other a little bit more as well as try different problem solving strategies. Hey, you too. Hey, you too. Yeah, I'm ready. On your mark, get set, go. As a community, we're better if all the kids are happy and successful. And this is a population that has struggled in school, and when they struggle, they act out as a way of telling people things aren't working for them. But how that manifests itself can many times take away from the culture and the feel of a building. So I'm going to pull him up. His, his voice is going to come through speakers. His picture is going to be up on the screen. All right? Yeah. Yeah, and I need you guys to support me. Sure, so uh, uh, just to uh, probably be good to do a little bit of an introduction yes, to sir. let you know who I am and what we're doing and, and uh, why you guys have your laptops in front of you. Um, does that sound good? Yes, yes, definitely. If we can have these people feeling like they're accepted and useful and actually feeling like I have something to offer, then, then, your, then your community improves. So my name is Jeff Merrick, and I'm a, a doctoral student here at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I'm a former high school teacher and assistant principal. Um, and I'm out here and I study how virtual worlds can be used to improve relationships and learning. <laughs> put, your, put yourself into these two different character shoes. Um, and you know, by doing that, by actually imagining yourself in other people's shoes, it actually can help you collaborate and work better with other people. That actual act of imagining that will lead you to have a better relationship with that person. When you understand a person's perspective or background better, you're more likely to treat them with more respect. The overall goal of this class was for students to feel like they are driving their own education. Okay, here's something I want to accomplish. I need help from either an adult or another student in the room, and that's the collaboration would be much more organic that way. All right, I'm, I'm Rob Schultz. I'm the executive director of Cover Home Repair, and Cover does um, home repair, urgently needed home repair for low-income homeowners, both in Vermont and New Hampshire. 
And we also run the Recover Store, a place where um, people donate things to us and anybody can shop. Um, and all the proceeds from the Recover Store go to support our home repair program. Um, this morning, we have a, this great opportunity of um, students from the I, the, the, the I students are here. They're here for a relatively short period of time, but they're doing work that we absolutely need to have done, which is our driveway suffered some damage in the rain. Um, and we also had some material in our basement from some plumbing work. And it's just, it's a lot of work to do. And these students, they've only been here less than 45 minutes and they're almost done with the job. And it's all, there. so, and, and at the end of the day, we're gonna have a whole bunch of rubble that we had to get out of our basement, which is a very narrow, windy stairway. And, uh, and, and they will have filled in these ravines in our driveway. So it's work that honestly, we had to have done. And, um, and these, these students are just being wonderful. And they showed up with, good energy and they've been positive about the whole thing and it's 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 not glory work but it's the work that just needs to be done to help keep a small organization thriving um, and I also talked with the students uh, last week about the fact that part that all of Recover's work is done with volunteers and what that um, and so this would they're simply volunteering like anybody else does at Cover um, and that volunteering is a great way to pay it forward because honestly almost all of us are going to need some help someday and so Cover helps provide that help and these wonderful young people are helping us get the job done so that's what I have to say today the population that is in the eye this year is a population we've had every year we have a group of disengaged students that have in past not necessarily been met at the door with a new program saying, hey, we're here to meet your needs. Their impact, just in terms of discipline and their sense of comfort, is much improved as opposed to what it would be if they weren't part of this program. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Fields, owner and doctor of Fields of Vision Eye Care here in Lebanon, New Hampshire. I uh, got involved with this program because I met Roy and he was telling me what he wanted to do with these kids. And I think I connected with them because I do a lot of international work. There's a need. And I was also an extremely shy individual when I was their age. Couldn't have a conversation with anybody, much less sit and talk to a camera. You know, life is a bunch of opportunities that are presented to us. And it's a matter of taking advantage of opportunities and learning from other people. And without those opportunities, none of us would be doing what we're doing. And so I just saw this as an opportunity for me to give back a little bit of what many individuals have given me through my life and so by helping them get their glasses that helps them see better and it provides a little bit of self-esteem and self-confidence and gets them on a journey towards their own success then that is great that's exactly what I'm looking for So the new program is, you know, if we look at what we have done as a staff in terms of preparation, it's been hours and hours and hours for if you walk into the classroom to see what's going on. Uh, and you'll see us not doing much and the students doing more and us more as guides than we are instructors. And that type of work, ironically, as we found out, preparation for that takes twice the amount of time as it does to prepare a lesson to get up and lecture or assign group work that they will complete this task by the time they are done. In general, preparing for the I is all about what are the possibilities of this activity. So if we're going to do this, what are the possible outcomes? No, I, no, I, 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 Um, so that they'll become, um, so they'll be better.
So hi, I'm Miss Abel, and I have the pleasure of being a teacher in the I program. And today we are working in a kitchen with a bunch of bushels of apples and having the kids make homemade applesauce. And they've had an opportunity to learn how to do that from beginning to end. And then we're going to have a chance to take the finished product over to the Haven. And it's great to see them all work together and learn how to make this product. Hi, I'm Michael Denmead and I'm a recreational therapist. We were here at the Red Ropes course with the Eye program doing some experiential education, also adventure-based therapy using uh, different modalities, different elements where they had to work together uh, as a team to help provide uh, opportunities for good communication, uh, work together, problem solve, work through struggles. There's times on the elements when they were on the Moby Deck where they had to really communicate together about how to get things balanced. And in any relationship, in any group working together, there's a balance, there's a, a working together that you have to find the middle ground. And they also had fun at the same time. Uh, I saw a lot of growth from the initial uh, elements that we were on, the Wild Woozy and the Triangle Traverse, where it gave them an opportunity to get everybody aboard, work problems out, and if they didn't work the first time, they had opportunities to come up with new solutions. You know, in adventure-based uh, programs like this, it gives an opportunity as long as it's brought back into the curriculum. One of the nice things that it gives an opportunity when you have staff involved or teachers involved, it gives them an opportunity to change roles, right? Because there's always a power discrepancy between students and teachers, even if it's just subtle. And the nice thing when the teachers were involved in some of the elements and the students had to guide them or problem solve for them, it changed that power dynamic a little bit and it gave them an opportunity for locus of control, which with adults, where you have as a young person to do that, you can spend some time feeling kind of self-satisfied that, hey, you know, I was kind of coaching the, the teachers or coaching the adults here. Essentially, you have five learning systems from Barbara Given that is um, emotional, social, cognitive, physical, and reflective learning systems of the brain and how those things are interrelated. Okay, and I'm going to explain that a lot of these words, it's the same thing repeated in different places, so don't freak out. But we're going to take what you do, take what you know how to do, and we're going to figure out how to move you over. So we have communication, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And then you have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 down the side, which, are, which is in effect those four C's. And then how we're going to measure those. And we tried to target those as best as we could to have them not compete with one another and have them work uh, symbiotic relationship, so to speak, so that they could essentially feel better about being in school and, and access learning. What type of communication did I give you? Reading. 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 For me, it's writing. Reading. For you, it's reading. I'm going to speak it. Instead of speaking it, I'm going to write it down. If I'm trying to get information from someone else, I can read it or I can hear it. Those are the two inputs that we're dealing with in terms of communication. Okay, focus more on voice that audience. If you look at your Report cards, you're going to see those things are defined for you. All right? I make my students memorize those over time. Focus. What's the precise point or effect of your communication? I'm going to put everything in the context of writing right now. You know, not being able to move around and just feeling stifled in a lot of ways that the school system itself is not engaging those learning systems, then it's really an inhibitor to learning as opposed to something that is supposed to enhance learning, which is the antithesis of what school is. With the camper project, I want to focus on building the uh, chassis and the main body of the camper itself. The role that I want to play in the camper project is the management with how we're going to spend the money and how we're going to make the profit. I want to help build the um, kitchen area. I'll build all of it. I'll help build most of it, just not the kitchen, because Maya wants to do it. Right, and I don't want to fight her for it, so. I want to put the aluminum like foil on it 
Um, probably like putting all like the wood and the sidings on the frame. I don't really see any challenges in making it or trying to sell it because Vermont is kind of a place where everyone wants to go camping, so. I think we're gonna have problems with like the wiring and also like marketing. Uh, just marketing it. I think that might be a challenge. Uh, I think we're gonna do some advertising over the radio, like a newspaper ad and like when we do our personal projects, we still kind of fight about things. And then 20% project, we fight a lot, and on the campus, we don't fight at all. But they say that it's going to be costing too much. I tell them no, because I have connections. There's only a couple of us that walk on the campus at, at certain times. The teachers have helped us like get better at working together and talk to us about what we need to do to work together. Like, to improve teamwork and like working together. I feel like I'm a uh, better group worker, stick with my projects and goals a little bit more than I used to. Social skills and more outgoing, because I've never been really an outgoing person. Focusing and interacting with other people. Communication, like not solving everything with like threats and everything. I kind of talk in and out. Make sure I get all my work done even when I'm being distracted. Uh, like publicly speaking, yeah. A lesson in disguise, kind of like. I think it's going to help me in the future, but I don't think it's helping right now. Because I have no need for it right now. Kevin's first subway ride. How you doing, Kev? This is my first subway ride. I've never been on one. So here's the John Hancock building. And then there's the Prudential where we're going. Here we are, guys, at the top of the Hub restaurant. Everyone say hi. Hey. How are you enjoying your trip to Boston? At the Prudential building right now. Show them the view. Yeah, let's show the view. All right. Hey, yo, what my heart can't afford is nice shoes. But right now, I'm going to do this for Hartford High School. I hope we're talking about Connecticut when I'm blessing. I'm freestyling. I've been doing this since I was a freshman. I'm holding it down. Yep, but I saw I'm nice like Jordan. I'm the reason why the pretty young lady's recording. I'm just dropping the sample. She got me up on the apple. That's a Macintosh. That means I can boo-boo applesauce. I'm just freestyling, yet the flow was crazy. Whoa, from the young lady, why the camera was JVC, HD, freestyling, yup, I'm rocking. Blades was crossing, freestyle, we down in Boston. So, yo, I can write a manual for y'all. I'm freestyling in front of Mr. Samuel, y'all. That's Adams, uh, and I am talking about the beer. Freestyling, brother with Patagonia, just got here. I'm holding it down, uh, yep, that's so much love. He took off the gloves, but first he gave my man a hug. I'm freestyling, yup, black swan, that's young fella. Uh, my young brother looking like Fonzie. Pots of belly without the leather, uh, so I get it together when I'm rapping. I'm the reason why she started laughing. Swan. But in terms of shifting into you know algebra, um, that's been harder to relate, I think, um, because the kids start looking at that and seeing math as less um, less project related and more doing the math and the marketing piece for the camper trailer and implementing grammar when you're writing a letter to somebody or you're posting on Facebook.
after the first showing of the documentary so far, the first 20 minutes or so when we showed that to the kids and myself, I had one of those moments, you know, kind of out of body experience, but where you step back and take a look at, you know, you see the bigger picture and what you've done. And I said, hey, you know, we've done some pretty cool things, some pretty neat things. But then I also look around the room and say, you know, we've got, we've still got a ways to go. Uh, I think the students' perception of the video was pretty positive. Um, I think that as much as they would hate to admit it, you know, it was cool to see themselves, you know, in a in a movie or you know, in a um, in a positive light of, of saying, you know, here's something that you're taking part in that has some value to other people. Um, I'm hoping that that is going to act as a catalyst for improved motivation in the class. But overall, I think that the kids received it pretty well, and I, I know I personally am really looking forward to seeing the end you know, product, um, both in terms of the documentary and in terms of what does the program look at the end, what kind of did the kids get out of it. Every school should have some kind of an alternative to the regular program. I, I actually think we should have a lot of different alternatives. I think the risks are always that it will fail, like kids won't do well, and we've invested a lot of time and, and energy, and that's equal to money. <laughs> To, you know, I know that pretty much just freshmen right now, so I hope that we can have some sophomores that were in it this year and then new freshmen coming in, so hopefully we can expand a little. There's already been a big investment, and I think, uh, you know, we can do some more, and I also think the program can support more students. Forget trying some other new program. Most of the time I'm not very engaged at all. If I put more effort into the I program, I'll get more information back. Sometimes I'll feel like really engaged in mm -hmm. something and then like I'm all with them. Usually pretty engaged, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff we learned about this year, so yeah. Yes, because the teacher was all calm this year. <laughs> I feel relaxed, not so calm, but why not? I'm around my friends. You can say that. I feel more like, I feel more comfortable, like I'm at home. A lot of the time I do, uh -huh. when I'm not being like annoyed. Yeah, they're basically hands on, so I'm mm -hmm. pretty engaged. I feel pretty engaged with this class. Uh, I'd, pro I'd probably be more inclined to try to be engaged, but around my friends all the time in this class, it's everybody in here I know and mm -hmm. I've been friends with, so. Yeah, because they're like always relaxed and like alert of what's going on. Because the other classes are not like the I. Oh, the one that says Kevin Willard by Kevin Willard? Yeah. That one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's about me. Working on my presentation. Not yet, it's not done. Okay. It's almost done. 
probably when I was working on the presentation for Mr. Gardner. Probably use the camera project. We're working on it for like a month and basically we just trying to put it together and that's basically my role. They have us set our standards and as we, as we reach our goals we set higher standards. But the other classes, they don't do that. They give us homework and they tell us to do it. The I program, they don't give us homework. Well, our homework is to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to present our stuff. The other classes I have should be like the I. I think when they really like want something done and they don't force me, they kind of like give me like a little time to like just be social and do whatever, and then they let me. They tell me like that I need to do this, and then I can get it done, and then I can be social again. I feel like I'll be way more engaged with it. Like it's like the I program is really exciting. It makes my day. We worry that the academic rigor has not prepared them for another class. The first half of this year has been spent in trying to get the kids to understand the format of the class. Making sure that the writing is brought up, that the math standards are brought up. Um, so we, we know what we have to work on. We knew going in that it would be something that evolved throughout the course of the uh, semester and the school year. We've had an opportunity to have a lot of one-on-one, one-on-two um, classes, which really works to our advantage as well as theirs. Within the traditional classroom, to be able to be in a small, close-knit environment and work on projects that they have a lot of say and input into. We've seen some real gains with a lot of these students, and I would say that we're just all keeping our fingers crossed that we keep moving forward. One of the biggest successes I've seen is when a couple of our students, Kevin and Josh, have got interested in fixing an old engine. Um, you know, Kevin woke up early, got his, his dad to donate an old used power washer, they brought it in, and Josh and Kevin have spent a lot of second block going down there tweaking with it, tinkering with it, trying to get it started. All know that this, this project is starting to make real progress when someone comes in and starts talking about what they're doing at home. That, that all of a sudden they're assigning themselves homework. Some of the students are really learning how to be accountable for their actions, their words. For example, we've had a lot of students get angry at each other and want to uh, fight, but they haven't. Talk to any of the kids in it or the adults involved with it, it's, it's been a beneficial thing for them. I do believe that they've grown academically. I think, again, if um, students feel comfortable, especially as freshmen. I think a big part of that has been the relationships between the students and the adults. We've had times where we've had conflicts that the kids haven't resolved effectively, but it's one of our standards that we work on. Anytime you want to see a dysfunctional relationship come down, when the camper's being built and it's not obvious what step two is. What we know is that for 80% of students in this country, public education works. 20%, roughly, it doesn't. If students go the entire year without finding that one interest or one project to pursue, but they've tried many other things, I think that in and of itself is, is a success because they're finding out what they are interested in, what they, even if they haven't found it yet, um, the pursuit is not for naught. Well, last night, I was looking at my looking through my emails and I got an email saying that Teen Inc. chose my poem to be on their front page on underneath the subject poems. So Yes. My poem got published in Teen Inc. magazine. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I guess it's like a pretty nice sized magazine, so it has sections. So in the poem section, I'm on the first page on the poem section. Yes! Nice job! Woo! We have like this for the brochure right here is about the eye, and this is about the camper. We need to add more stuff to it, and then probably like right here, you're looking at like state parks or camping areas, so we can put that right there and give people ideas of where to go. Just like I'm with my friends and everything, and we've all become pretty close. We don't really fight anymore like we did at the beginning. I learned how to work. Uh, better in groups. Well, I do mostly everything. Depends on who I'm working with. Sometimes I don't want to get along with them. Sometimes it's interesting and sometimes it's not. I thought it'd be easy.
here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not. It's trying to figure out what are we going to do to get people to notice it. So that was the really, really hard part. Yep, every day to make sure you get some time to reflect. Every day, um, no matter for second block. They give us like 10 minutes. With too much time. I don't think the reflections are worthwhile at all. I don't think it really has a point. They kind of get boring after a while. Sometimes you don't know what to write. Sometimes you do, but... I think definitely the teachers of the eye have had a positive impact on my learning. I feel like it's a actually a pretty good opportunity to uh, get my interest in stuff that I really want to do because you go places and I think it's going to be a really cool thing to do and I feel like it might be able to help me get more into becoming a veterinarian and, or a tech designer. I, well, at first I thought that um, the eye wasn't really something I wanted to do but when I actually saw it um, and experienced what it's like then it looked like a lot of fun. It's not really, I don't know, it just it seems really fun. And I just feel like it's a really good learning opportunity. And this is Maya Hawkins, who will tell you a little bit about what's going on. In our classroom called The Eye, we are doing more hands-on hands -on projects. And how that helps us is, is that it helps us communicate with each other. There's, there's 30 businesses that every Thursday morning expect to see Maya doing a 60-second presentation to them. They miss her when she's not there. Um, Maya feels a part of the group. She missed one day. She was sick. She sent me a text that she felt like she was letting the group down. Hello, I'm Maya Hawkins from Harvard High School. Um, I'm going to give you an update about the camper. So that connection to, to groups outside the building, that far exceeds my expectations when I first started this. We will cover it with a piece of aluminum. And, um, and at this point, we are trying to figure out how to how to how to place the solar panel, how to attach it to the roof. That's good. I think it was a good overall year. Yeah, I think we uh, did a lot of stuff that you know probably couldn't have done in the past. In the beginning of the year, it was kind of awkward. I don't know. I guess I'm not used to the way that not getting pushed to do something. They really need to make us do our work. They should be a little more strict because of us, like, we do something and they're just like, stop, stop. And we do something yet, stop, stop. They don't really, like, take anything away. I don't think I'd change anything. They should have been, like, in our business, like, with certain things. You got to get ready for math next year and all that other stuff. Hey, the teachers could be a little more strict about things. Sophomore year is just, like, freshman year. That's how I see it. It's just another year of school. I think next year is going to be good. I think it's going to be a little tough because going back to regular classes, I'm going to have four classes. The best part was probably the 
going to Boston. Going to Boston. I think the trips were fun because the class is able to bond. Just building stuff in Minecraft. Boston was definitely the most fun I had this year. Me writing my poems. The beginning where like everyone was, I don't know, I guess getting to know each other. Like building campers and you know, just team building stuff. Do I feel accomplished? Yeah, somewhat, like halfway, half not way. Learning to interact with people, and that was probably because of the eye. I think getting to know people better, because at the beginning, like, we didn't really like each other. I like, like, two people, and now we're kind of like family. I think I pay more attention in class now. I started doing Khan Academy to get some of my math skills up. Some of the goals that I set here, has not been reached yet. I only went to B and I once. I probably probably think I should, could have gone more. Trying to get to school on time. I think I just blew it off. I wish I didn't, you know, do it now. So. so, what advice would you give to the next kind of generation of I kids next year, if they asked you for advice about taking this class specifically? I think they should like look forward to the future and realize that they need to get ready for the year after because. You know, they're going to have regular classes, too. Don't slack off as much as I do. And don't take too much time away from math and English, because they have the, the teachers will help you. They're willing to help you. That's what they want. They want you to ask. I would say don't mess around. Actually do your work. Like, don't think just because you're in that class it's going to be easier to sophomore year, too. It's not. Not to take disadvantage of this class. Take advantage of it. It gets fun, and you don't want the time to take away from you. It's going to be a lot better than you thought it would. Straighten out. Don't be stupid about this time because you only got so little of it. I wish that I was put in sophomore and junior year. I think it was a good year. It's been fun. It was really fun. I thought that the school, like just doing work was so boring and now I'm kind of like, I want homework. Like I want the work. Do you feel like this was a good year? Yeah. Yes, it was very amb ambitious, but I think that is a very good goal for us kids. We could have finished it had we not been slacking so much. Some of the people down there, including myself. We didn't really spend much time on it. Do you still want to build a kitchen? Yes. Do you think you'll be able to do that before the end of the year? No. Yet yeah, we haven't succeeded, but I think we can work on it during the summer and probably finish it up 